So, <clears throat> good morning to all of you. Good evening. Good afternoon in your respective locations. Today we are continuing with our discussion study of Raghavarma Chandrika by Sri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. We are in our meeting number 22, 22nd meeting. And today we will be finishing the study of the first, the fifth verse or prose from the second part of the book, the second illumination. We are in the third uh, lecture. We are dedicating to this fifth prose or verse. So I think we will finish today. We will have some remaining, three remaining verses before finishing the whole treatise, which will be considerably long. So we will be together, I think, for a month or so yet. <laughs> So before starting with today's topic, let's make some recap of what we were seeing uh, last Thursday. We were studying this fifth verse from the second part. Uh, and then there Vishwanath is sharing some examples from scripture regarding this principle of uh, Madhuri and Aishwarya, specifically how, hmm, how the Brajavasis react when Aishwarya becomes prominent in the dynamics of the Lila, what's their psychology mm -hmm. in, to that, basically? So Vishwanath be begins by quoting the Yugal Gita from the Bhagavatam, mm -hmm. 35th chapter, when the gopis are telling Jashoda Mai that the Gandharvas and other Upadevas, sub-demigods, mm -hmm. surrounded Krishna when he was returning home, back home with the cows and friends in the forest, and they surrounded him in all the different directions, starting to worship him with hymns, prayer, flowers, and so on, Brahma, other personalities. And in that context, Vishwanath mentioned how Krishna's friends who were there with him, like Sridham, Subal, and so others, they saw Brahma, saw Indra, and Narada, this universal, renowned, great personalities praying to his friends bowing to his friend Krishna with songs and different offerings and flowers and so much reverence in the, in the, in the presentation, in the paraphernalia. When Krishna was just returning with his friends from the forest back home. But the point is, the mood, their sakya, their friendship uh, was not slightly diminished in the, in the face of such, uh, uh, <laughs> not such a big display, if you will, of Aishwarya. Their Madhurya didn't slacken, basically. But on the contrary, as we always know, it increases. And similarly, Vishwanath mentioned, upon hearing of this same situation from the Gopas, the Gopis, the Braja, Gopikas, they, they exhibited us in the words of Vishwanath some unshakable, fix, unshakable fixation in their Madhurya Bhav for Bhagavan. So as we mentioned also, no, and, and Krishna does, Kaviraj mentions in his Govinda Lamrit that the Gopas did not only, were not affected, but again, they saw their sake increase in the form of a Sanchari Bab, like Hasya Rasa, if you will, mm -hmm. or the secondary Rasa, if you will, like Hasya coming to the fore, where they started to mock the demigods, to imitate them, to mimic them, and um, think they, these guys are really, they are foolish, because they do not know, they are glorifying Krishna because he killed Putana and Sakatasura and this and other demon, but they are not aware that if Krishna was able to do so, it's because Vishnu empowered him by Vishnu being pleased with Nanda Maharaj's prayers and offerings. Mm -hmm. So in the same way, the gopis by hearing this lila reacted in a similar line, according to their rasa. Also, we quoted Govardhan lila, which is a very important moment in the Krishna lila for giving us an example of how Ishvara is overt and how the Brajavasis react mm, to that. Mm. The Madhurya is not diminished. Their intimacy, intimate connection with Krishna is not slackened, but on the contrary, it goes, it, it reaches new heights. So Vishwanath, in the next section that we shared, he continues with this idea, mentioning that in the same way, such as it happened with the friends of Krishna, with the gopis, regarding Yashoda, she didn't experience the slightest weakened, weakening of their maternal love, their Bhatsale, when she heard Nanda Maharaj is trying to console the early Brajavasis by sharing some words hmm, uh, regarding 
the the governor Lila. And some Rajabas came to Nanda Maharaj and said, Well, maybe your son is God or something close to that. You shouldn't chastise him, I think. You should treat him maybe maybe differently. What do you think? And as you know, Nanda Maharaj said, I know God. I know how God is, how Vishnu Narayan is. He's calm, he's peaceful, he's equipoised. Krishna is not like that at all. He lies, he cries, he fears, he steals, he cheats. <laughs> and even if he's God, as we say, first of all, he's my son. So if I have to chastise him for, to educate him, I will do that. And remember Gargamuni's words about him, that Vishnu will do wonderful things through him and so on. So in a similar way, just show them I, when she was hearing, Nanda reacted like this and just showed us similarly. And she heard this, um, her Batsalya was not affected at all. Vishwanath here has given the example of similarly like a, due to maternal pride, to maternal love, uh, she felt maybe, oh, I'm blessed to have my son as the Supreme Lord. Mm, basically, her Saliba become intensified, like an ordinary mother, he's saying, like a, not Yashoda, basically, any mother whose son becomes a king or a ruler or the president, we gave the example, mm, and she, her motherly love increases for him, basically. Mm, so we gave that example. And Krishna is not God, My basically God is an aspect of Krishna. <laughs> Krishna is God beyond God, something else. Mm, Krishna is not the president of the cosmic administration that's god paramatma vishnu krishna is absorbed in lila basically so it's the same way we get the example of the president in the presidential house going back at home so god being an aspect of krishna try to to, to go deep this concept krishna is not an aspect of god god is an aspect of krishna outside home krishna is at home only playing so different types of reactions here no and Vishwanath finished the, the section by quoting again the Saka saying maybe okay Krishna is God we are blessed that our friend is the Supreme Lord the Braja Gopikas in the same way we are blessed that our beloved is the Supreme Lord but the first thing is our beloved our friend is God no? it's not that God is our friend God is our lover no our lover oh he is also God he's he happens to be the Supreme Administrator okay great blessings <laughs> So we should not mention that from all these statements, we can really conclude that even after the knowledge that Krishna's God comes, this Ishvara Gyan, as we mentioned, come to their attention, the mood, the individual mood of each of the Brajabhas is, is not diminishing, but actually is becoming strengthened. So after this Ishvara Gyan, Ishvara Gyan referred to hearing, I mean, acknowledging that Krishna is God, like the case of Vasudev, as we mentioned, Devaki, Arjun, previous cases outside of Raj, or hearing from others that Krishna is God or maybe God, which is mainly the case for the Brajavasis. Mm -hmm. Or even if we will, will like to entertain the idea that they will be not only to hear about that, but not believing, but even if they were to accept, okay, Krishna is God, that's totally secondary for them. My friend is God, my beloved is God. First, the mamata, the sense of I and mindness, will be related to the emotional bond with Krishna, not because he's God, but because he's their friend, their lover, their beloved, and so on. So we finish our lecture speaking about this and the concept of pranai also in the context specifically of Sakya Madhurya Rasa, which has to do with this idea of non-differentiation between myself and the object of my love. He, I, I, he, we and I, I, you and me become we, as Guru Maharaj will say, this dynamic union with there is so much intimacy, so much connection. One is an extended limb of the other, if you will. Such confidence, such visramba. So some words that we have tried to share, we will continue sharing today, trying to go deep into the psychology, plumb the depths, if you will, of the psychology of the Brajavasis, because that's what we want to become invited in. That's what it means to practice Raganuga Bhakti, gradually becoming more and more attracted, charmed, and identified. With the psychology of the Brajavasi, that was that's a way to enter Rindavan. And of course, we have also the, the mean the, the gate of the Gor Lila in between, as we know. But now we are focusing here in connection to the Braj. So after this recap, let me share with you the next section that Vishwanath will share today, and, and, and through which we will be finishing this fifth verse or prose, where he continues elaborating on his point in the connection of Aishwarya 
on Maduria. So I'll share this in the chat. First part, we'll share some few parts today. So it says like this. <clears throat> when the Brajavasis meet with the Lord, Aishwarya Gyan does not manifest in them. Meeting is like the cool rays of the moon, but separation is like the scorching rays of the sun. Due to the burning pain of separation, Aishwarya Gyan sometimes momentarily manifests. Even then, because of the absence of reverence, the heart does not palpitate and feelings of awe are not aroused. Hence, this cannot really be accepted as Aishwarya Gyan. So now we will see a very interesting, uh, different vantage point of this situation. So what happens in the context of separation when Aishwarya Gyan is flourishing, if we will, in the context of separation, how much we can call that Aishwarya Gyan since the Madhurya side become, remains prominent. So till now, you know, just to put a little bit of context to the till now, the, the main point that Vishwanath Chakravarti wanted to, to establish in his work was to emphasize Aishwarya as a background, backdrop of Madhurya. So Brajalila is not uh, misunderstood. The Aprakrit, uh, the, the apparently mundane but super mundane nature is not misunderstood. Krishna himself deals with this misunderstanding from time immemorial, if you will. He says in the Bhagavad Gita, Abhajananti mammuda manusimta nunasritam param bhavamajanantu mamabhuta aishwaram. Those people who are like mudas, like foolish personalities, are not able to recognize my situation because they see me appearing in this manusimta nunasritam, taking shelter, if you will, <laughs> in the human form. No? Exhibiting my nara lila, human-like pastimes, Fools deride me when I appear in this form, which is my original form, and they are not able to to understand my supreme nature and how I remain the supreme controller of a whole. Of course, he's speaking there not to the Brajavasis, he wouldn't say such a thing because they are not there, they are deriding Krishna, criticizing him in another context, in the context of the Lila. He's speaking Upanishadic wisdom to Arjuna in the Gita here. But he's making the point. Many people misunderstand his Nara Lila. And Nara Lila may also include something outside of the Braj. Krishna appearing like he appeared to Arjuna, two armed. I mean, at one point he appeared with more arms, but generally he's two armed in front of Arjuna. That's already some form of human like pastimes. What to speak in the Braj? The Srimad Bhagavatam also tries to. To secure our, our understanding in a similar way, as you know, you have the, this main 10, not only the 10 cantos, the 12 cantos, but all the first nine pointed to the 10 in a gradual succession, but also we have these 10 topics, main topics of the Bhagavad, and nine of them being the Tata selection, which are trying to take us to the Swarup election, to the main topic of the Bhagavad, which is Asraya, the Samon Banum, the ultimate shelter, which is Krishna, Bhagavan. And more specifically, Krishna's two Bhagavan Sayama, more specifically, as we said, Braja Krishna, two Bhagavan Sayama. So there is a whole necessity of different points to be made on the way for us to reach, to converge in Braja Krishna conception and not misunderstanding. So Vishwanath is very carefully here trying also to guide us, to take us by the hand along all these different uh, contemplations. So we may properly embrace, have a proper conceptual orientation towards the Brajalila. Mm? Mm. So we have to learn how to connect all these different things. No, the Bhagavatam says that, no, it's just trying to give us some banda, showing proper understanding of Bhagavan and his connection with his Shaktis, and starting from those things that we already know, this world and ourselves, and gradually trying to take us to God and to the different aspect of God, and finally throwing us in the Brajalila, <laughs> but so many lessons have to be learned in the way. So here, Vishwanath is trying to present a similar uh, dynamics. So now he will go into a different direction. He's continuing pounding the post of Aishwarya and Madhurya, and how Aishwarya is taking shelter, if you will, in Madhurya. Madhurya has prominence in Braj, but Aishwarya is there 
giving transcendence to it all for it not to be ordinary. And now he will present this particular focus of the situation, which is how the Brajabasis keep experiencing Madhurya and incre keep increasing their experience of Madhurya, even in the face of overt Aishvarya. And specifically, he will speak here in the case of Vipralamba, of separation, Viraha from Krishna. He will share some famous examples in this connection as well. <clears throat> Well, in this connection, also at the Baladev Vidya Bhushan, it is mentioned there is a book he wrote called Siddhanta Ratna. Ananta Daspan quotes Baladev in this connection. And he says that Baladev there, he's saying that just, here he gives a nice analogy. He says, just as the Saraswati River is underlying in the tree Beni, in this confluctuation, I don't know if that's a word in English. Well, no problem. What this river is needed. So just as the Saraswati river is underlying the Tribeni, Aishwarya is underlying in the, in the Madhuri of the Brajavasis. You don't see the Aishwarya, as you don't see the Saraswati in the Tribeni, but it's, you, you know it's there. And in the same way, he says, just as the Saraswati river becomes visible at one point of the Tribeni, called the Tribeni Sangam, during a specific moment, he's not only speaking about in certain place, but at certain moment, so Tribeni Saraswati becomes visible in the Tribeni Sangam at full moon or at some other auspicious occasion. He says, similarly, some, some conception of Aishvarya may be slightly manifest within the Brajabas at the time of separation, or also he will say at the time of astonishment or danger, certain specific <clears throat> emotional moments in the existence of the Brajabas will bring to light a certain expression of Aishwarya so that they may be consoled. No? That, that's part of the Lila Shakti arrangement. In that particular moment of their up, up, no? upsurging of that emotion, astonishment, tamatkar, viraha separation, some danger. Mm? So in order for there to be properly consoled, Aishwarya Shakti has to, no? to do some service there, basically. Guru Mahesh expresses like that. No? Every Shakti in a personified way. So Aishwarya Shakti trying to render some service in the Goloka as well. So these are the moments, if you will. This is an entry point. But Vishwanath mentions here, even in those cases, when in separation, astonishment, and so on, some Aishwarya comes to the fore, you cannot properly call that Aishwarya because there is no intense reverence at the time of its manifestation. And Vishwanath already defined before Madhurya, which means that that feeling that remains intimate even in the face of Aishwarya, even no matter what's going on outside, but how you are feeling inside. And so that's the point here. The Madhuri experience of Rajis is of such nature that even when they will witness hundreds of Aishwarya like Aishwaric manifestations of Krishna, that's not causing even the slightest reverence in their, in their hearts. In their hearts. And we are Focus in that section, in the, in the hearts of the Brajabas. <laughs> and that won't weaken also the relationship with Krishna at all. On the contrary, as we mentioned, it will make the relationship with him more fixed, more firm. That's the, the interesting thing. It won't even remain the same. It cannot remain the same. It's always moving in some direction. And whatever is happening, some intimate moment or some Aishwari like moment, the nature of the Brajabai psychology is such that whatever is happening on the outside, everything is nourishing mm, the Madhurya for Krishna. That's an important point that Vishwanath wants to make here. No matter if Krishna is lifting Govardhan, no matter if Krishna, we will see, is, 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 is rescuing Nanda Maharaj from the abode of Varuna, no matter if whatever is happening, or if he's still in batter of his misbehaving with the gopis, no matter whatever he's doing, the only reaction from the side of the Brajabas is an strength and on an increasement of their Madhurya. So that, that's the very theme of Braj. And that's why also Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, he considers a very nice verse from the Bhagavad. We say, Traya Chupani Shabdischa Sankhya Yogar Chasatkotai Bhagiya Manamahatmyam Harim Samanyatatmajam. It's a verse that says, 
the three Vedas and the Upanishads and, and different scriptures consider Krishna the absolute, establish him in that supreme position, hmm? the Satvatas hmm? and so on. But he says, Upagya Manamahadvan Harin Samanya Tatmajam. But for her, this is in the eighth chapter of the tenth canto, we are in the Dhamadar Lila. But for her, for Yashoda, Harim, Hari was Samanya Tatmajam. He, he, she saw him only as, his, as her child. That person that the Vedas and Upanishads glorifying him, and then after him, she say, no, she's not God. You're, the Vedas and Upanishads say Krishna is God, just as they say Krishna is not God. So who is right? Who is more correct? The Vedas are after Krishna, and Yasoda has Krishna on her lap. So who is correct? We take the statement of Yasoda ultimately. We take the Upanishads on, on in-between level of our progress, but in our ultimate goal, we will fully embrace Yasoda Siddhanta, if you will. Krishna is not God. <laughs> and Krishna, um, Vishwanath Chakravarta, when he comments this verse in his Sarartha Darshan, he says, this is the Paribas Sutra for the Krish whole Krishna Lila. We have the Paribas Sutra for the Bhagavatam, which as we know is Krishna's two Bhagavan Sayam, the, the, the statement around which all the other statements revolve, and the password, the end to code, to end to access Krishna Lila. When you enter Krishna Lila, you have this other Paribas Sutra specifically connected to the Krishna Lila, which speaks about the very psychology of the Vrajavasis. All of them say something about Krishna, but the Vrajavasis have another testimony to give. That's, that's the Bhagavatam. For us, the Bhagavatam is supreme because it contains a particular way of concluding about Krishna, the Brajabhasis I. <laughs> so eventually we want to embrace that Siddhanta for eternity. So, um, we already saw in previous classes how in Vrindavan lots of, of Ashwaris manifest there actually, from Krishna's Kumar Lila from the very beginning all the way up to the Rasa Lila Krishna's exhibiting Aishwarya over and over again. And that's interacting in between with, in, 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 with Madhuri. Mm -hmm. And again, the Brajavasi had witnessed many pastimes, like the killing of Putana with Krishna being just a few days, the killing of different Asuras, Agasura, Bhakasura, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the lifting of Govardhan, mm -hmm. defeating of Kaliya, swallowing the forest fire. I mean, those are pretty Aishwarya things. But again, they felt no hesitation at all because Krishna was their Krishna, basically. No? <laughs> they were not like affected in the connection to him. Actually, all these pastimes, it is say that they appear as being decorated with unending Madhurya. In their eyes, in their lens, the Madhurya lens, everything was tinged with a particular sort of charm, even though there was so much Aishwarya on the outside. One example, classical example, is the Rasa Lila, when Krishna simultaneously manifested himself between each pair of the unlimited gopis entering in between to show this, this particular pastime. And after that, as you know, he entered the kunjas with different gopis to interact with them privately. But all these signs of Aishwarya drowned it. Like sometimes there is one example given, like a grass. Now, drowned within the, 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 the ocean of the gopis, Madhurya or sweetness. And actually that nourished their feelings for him. So this is an example that is classically given from different acharyas and commentators, which is an example of the straw of, straw of grass and the milk. You may, put, you may have a straw of grass and the connection to Aishwarya and Madhurya and their prominence in Braj. So you put the straw, in a large pot of boiling milk, no? boiling milk. So boiling milk will refer to the Madhuri of the Brajavasis, the affection, the boiling affection. And the straw will refer Aishwarya, even though it's Aishwarya seems something very powerful, in the face of this Madhuri, it becomes like straw. It becomes humbler than the straw in the street, Trinada <laughs> Pisunich. So you put the straw, no? imagine, in a large pot of boiling milk. The straw remains visible for a minute on the surface, but for a second, not even for a minute, for a second, and it's totally swallowed by the boiling milk. It disappears completely, and you won't be able to, to find it. But it's there somewhere, buried, again, under layers and layers of Madhuri in this case. So Ashwarya is compared to this straw in the milk, which is concealed in the 
fathomless ocean of Madhurya in Braj. And you have no way of knowing it's there, basically. If you are looking at the pot, you will never see the straw. You will only see boiling meal, boiling meal. But it's there. Ashwar is there in Braj. In the same way, but also as the, as the blade of grass which is situated below come floating on the surface when maybe the milk is stirred, stirred, you say? Or while being boiled by the fire in the oven, if you start to stir the milk, it may appear. Similarly, to say that Aishwarya becomes manifest when the ocean of the Brajavasa's milk or love, <laughs> milk is affection, is being heated and stirred, continue with the analogy, by the slow fire of separation. So now we will go to this point that Vishwanath wants to make here. Give some examples of how in separation the straw, the Aishwarya comes to the foreground. But again, this will come without letting the Aishwarya overcome the Madhurya. So, so, so this is the, the, the nature. Generally, this Aishwarya, like the grass, is drowned in the oceans of the Brajabas, is much less sweetness, much less boiling milk. And, and, and actually, that because nourish that all that nourishes the presence of that is is nourishing their sweet feelings like the milk becomes sweetened hmm? sweet condensed milk if you want to follow the analogy but sometimes you may stir the milk and the straw may come so we will see some examples in that connection and that's why here Vishwanath is speaking about sambhog hmm? and viraha no? union and separation so union with krishna in union with Krishna, there is no awareness of any Aishvarya because everyone is experiencing the enjoying the, the, the bliss of being with, with their beloved, their son, their friend. So no tinge of Aishvarya can appear there because all the emotions are being externalized and expressed, the interaction is there, the joy is there. So that's why that meeting is compared by Vishwanath here with the moon rays as cool. And it's pleasant, no? cool because it's turning off the heat of separation, the forest fire, the scorching heat of separation, like the moon rays, and pleasant because it gives some taste, some rasa. In the same way that moon it is said in the Gita to give taste to different flavor to different foods. The same way the moon ray of Krishna's union gives rise to the experience of rasa. And as as, as the moon full moon appears. The waters of the ocean become agitated, also the hearts of the devotees become agitated with different types of loves. But at the time of separation, which is scorching, according to Vishwanath here, their awareness, the awareness of the Brajavasis of Krishna's Aishvarya, their Ishvar Gyan, as we mentioned before, somehow or other it get it manifests at times. But again, in a particular way, not like <laughs> any other devotee outside of the branch. No, never, it will never cover their Madhurya again. And it will never, not only not cover it, but it will increase it in some way or another. So next, in the next section, Vishwanath, here he's introducing the, the topic, the point, this particular focus. So now he will share maybe the most famous example in this connection, how in Vipralamba, in, 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 in this case, in romantic separation, Aishwarya comes in a unique way. So we will, he will share the very famous example of Srimati Radharani in the Brahma Gita, in the Bumblebee song, in the context of Madhurya Bhav, through the main epitome, the main representational uh, moment of, of this, which is, again, Shirada speaking in Divyan Ma to a Bumblebee. So I will share the, in the chat the next, uh, the next sec, the part of this, Section, it's there. So I'll read it. It says like this. For example, after he presented the topic, for example, in Brahma Gita, Srimati Radharani said, Oh Bumblebee, there is no more need for us to make friends with dark complexioned men. One black man slayed Bali like a hunter. Being controlled by a woman, he cut off the nose and ears of the last Surpanaka. One black man, like a crow, accepted the worship of Bali Maharaj and then punished him. Still, it is difficult to give up speaking about him. <laughs> mm. 
So there we have the, in the last section, we have the Madhurya element quite clearly. So here Vishwanath is giving, no? he, wa he wants to give an example of how this Aishwarya manifests itself at the time of separation in Braj, but in a sweet and maj majestic way at the same time, but nourishing the Rasa in such a way that it only can, it can only further nourish the particular emotion of the Vrajabhas. So in order to, to give an example of this, he shared the example of Sri Mati Radharan, speaking in the condition, as I say, of Divyan Mat, which means divine Unmat, divine madness, speaking to a bumblebee. So the very fact that if you are speaking to a bumblebee, already your sanity is put into question. <laughs> so what to speak in the way she's speaking to a bumblebee with the different ex ex exhibitions of different types of ecstasy and different types of jalpa, of crazy conversations, ujjalpa, prajalpa, bijalpa. And Uddhava was there, remember, Uddhava was there with the gopis, he was trying to pacify the gopis sent by Krishna with certain message, and he was witnessing the, the, the unending display of Mahabhav that for him was totally unknown, as Guru Mahesh will say. He thought he was going there to school someone, but he realized, I'm going to school here. I'm being a school here. I'm a, 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 a neophyte Kanishta pupil connected to what's going on in this realm. So here we are in one of these peak moments during Uddhava's visit to Vrindavan, after which he will fall to the ground and just cry and offer prayers to the Prem of the Vrajavasis. So in the commentary to this verse, this Bhagavad verse that Vishwanath is quoting here, Sridhar Swami, the famous Bhagavad commentator, he mentioned that during separation, Shimati Radharani perceives Krishna's divine Aishwarya. As we were seeing here, she's speaking here about Krishna's previous avatars. So you can, that's our bhaknyata, if you will. <laughs> Omniscience or knowing of, other, of the other one's previous life things. And so that's considerably an Aishwarya moment in separation. So Sridhar Maharaj, Sridhar Swami is saying, during separation, Radha is perceiving the Aishwarya of Krishna, his God appearing in different forms, in different life, And that's reminding her of his past and his previous descents. And thus, when he's is, is, is remembering all this, she's implying between other things the following here. No? She's speaking to the bumblebee and saying, all, the, all those who had a dark complexion, of course, referring to Krishna, but the bumblebee also has a dark complexion. <laughs> all who had a, a dark complexion are extremely crooked. Mm -hmm. Krishna is full, bended in three parts. It, it, it indicates his crookedness as well. But he goes beyond that. He starts to insult Krishna, to call him names. So those who have dark complexion are crooked, are merciless, are religious. So it is not just that I am afraid of the behavior of your friend, no? because she takes the bumblebee as a messenger of Krishna. I'm very much afraid of dark complexion people altogether. No? In her Divya Madhrada shows herself like traumatized, if you will, in that connection, speaking to someone with dark complexion. <laughs> so Ananta Das Bhavaj in this connection, he comments that at this point, the sanctuary bhav of Srimati Radharani, the transitory ecstasy of Nirveda, Nirveda means remorse, is so intense that she becomes afraid when she pronounces the word sham, which has to do with dark complexion people in this connection. So in this word, in this sense, he mentions, she's just using the word asita, which means not white. It, it was too much for her to directly say black. Again, it's an ecstatic, I am saying she's traumatized, but please do not compare that with our dysfunctionality on this plane. This is in terms of sanctuary bhav, which are ecstasies, transitory ecstasy that appear to nourish the sai bhav, the main ecstasy. So in this context, she's not saying the black one, but the non-white one. <laughs> and she, in that context, used the word asita for three examples she gives in this verse, connected to Krishna in different appearances. Two examples are connected to Ramachandra. One example is connected to Bhaman there. So let's share some words regarding these two examples, mainly connected to what Vishwanath himself mentions is his purport to these verses in his Sarata Darshini commentary. But as an introduction, here Shimatura Rani again is speaking to Bumblebee and saying, oh Bumblebee, now you're coming trying to sing the glories of your master, but actually, you are new to Mathura here, so you don't know the truth about the person you are speaking about, actually. 
not only in this life has your friend been cruel hearted actually, but in previous lives as well. And I have heard this from Purnamasi. So again, here Radha will say, I've heard from Purnamasi this, that Krishna has been Ramachandra in other birth, unbounded, but still there is some awareness, acknowledging of that in one context. So she's saying, not only do I fear such activities that he does in this particular lifetime or what on others, but also the nature of his color. He's dark, implies darkness. So thinking, uh, Shurada here is thinking of Krishna as, as, as non-different because of similar qualities. So she starts to find fault in Ramachandra and others like Ramachandra who are famous like Dirodatta, which means someone like very uh, correct, like very Mariyad Purushottam, that's the name of Ramachandra, the one who follows etiquette to the utmost extreme. So she starts to connect and find faults in them and say, if they have faults, they are zero data, they are expected to be so correct, and they have so many faults that we will see, they want to speak of Krishna. He's crooked from tip to toe. <laughs> so the first asita, asita again means non-white or black, and black implies impurity. So asita also is applic applicable to an impure person. So in this case, she begins speaking about first two examples will be connected to Ramachandra. So she said, one Sita, one of these black, non-whitish, impure person, has secretly, behind, hiding behind the tree, killed the monkey king Bali. And here, this Bali is not the same Bali from Bam and Dev, no? Let's try to be, have clear the difference. Here we are speaking about the monkey king who appears in the Ramayana. So Ramachandra, one Sita, no, she won't say Ramachandra directly. She said just one Sita, one of these black personalities has secretly by hiding covertly behind a tree, killed the monkey Kimbali with his arrow from the back, just like a merciless uh, hunter, basically. And, and, and she says, even those who are hunters do not kill monkeys. And generally, that's not, they kill some other species, but not monkeys. Maybe deer, maybe this and that. But monkey, what, what for? No, they, the hunters know that monkey meat is uneatable. You cannot solve that the monkey flesh anywhere, but this person, Shirada implies, and also in the words of Vishwanath, he, simply because he was endowed with the blackish complexion, act in a way that is despicable, even for a hunter. Although he was the greatest among the righteous, Mariada Purushottam Sri Ramachandra, but he was acting in a low, lower way than even a hunter. Only why? Because it has this black complexion. <laughs> then again, and she continues criticizing Sri Ramachandra. She can do that. Only she can do that, of course. <laughs> then again, this personality was this Asita was so enamored, so attached to Sita that he, how do you say, maimed, like he maimed Sarpanaka by cutting off her nose. Again cruel personality, which was Surpanaka's fault. Well, she wanted to marry Ramachandra because she was attracted to him. And, and, but what, what, which was Ramachandra's reaction? Not only he did not marry her, but he, it, he made it impossible for anyone else to marry her by cutting off her nose and making her deformed, ugly. So again, Shira said the implication is that's because of her, his cruel nature. He did not. Did, he did not do this cruel act because he was protecting his vow of celibacy while wearing mated locks, matted locks, and dress of a renunciant in the in the forest at that time. Because at that time he was living with Sita, actually. So he was now Brahmachari. He was actually conquered by 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 the attachment to to Sita, and that's why he acted in such a cruel way. So we try to enter into the mood and in the context. Shura is speaking to a bumblebee exhibiting divine madness. And Uddhava, the greatest of all, no, no in persons is totally overwhelmed here. <laughs> but she has something else to say. And all this in the context of criticizing Krishna, of course. So he said, another Asita, the third example, which is Bhamandev, he took birth in a Brahmana family. And he, he, he appeared as a Brahmachari who was endowed with all good qualities, self-control, Mm, self-restraint, equilibrium, and so on. 
So at one point, I won't enter into the detail of the whole Lila, of course. But he appeared to Bali Maharaj asking for some mm, charity. Mm, and, and Bali Maharaj offered whatever he will like in such a way that he won't have to ask anything else anywhere mm, at any other moment in his life. So he, no, he showed his small feet to Bali Maharaj. He was a dwarf, so it was small feet to Bali Maharaj. What do we want? Only three steps of land, as you know. But at the end, as you know, he came up with very big feet, Brother Einstein playing here, and he covered the whole universe, planet Earth, Swarga, and eventually he bound up Bali Maharaj, took his articles of worship on the pretext of taking his third step of land. So as you know, in the first and second step, Bali Maharaj himself is saying, I gave you my land because you had conquered planet Earth at that time, and even Swarga. So with first step, Bam and Dev covered the whole planet Earth. So Bali said, oh, I gave you my Earth. And then he covered the second, Swarga. I gave you my Swarga. But of course, at that point, Vidyavali, who was um, Bali's wife, said, I mean, you still are thinking in terms of your Earth, your Swarga? No, it never be, belonged to you. You are thinking in terms of Ahamma Meti. If you think I gave you all this that is mine, actually, you have not given anything yet. Because you have, what you have to give is your false sense of proper proprietorship, your false sense of mine. So that's the third step, Admani Vedana. I belong to you. I give yourself, I give myself to you. You are my owner. Put your feet, third feet in my head. Actually, that's the only thing we can actually give, give ourselves. And not because we belong to us, but that's the only thing we can actually give voluntarily. We do not belong to ourselves. Nothing belongs to us, but what, who do we belong to? That's the real question. So to surrender our false sense of independence, independent existence, that's the whole idea here. So Sri Radha is criticizing Bamandev from this, uh, in the context of her ecstasy, saying like, you cheated Bali Maras, and just as a crow, she, she compares Bamandev with a crow. As a crow first eats the food of a donor, and then hurts him by striking him with its beak. Similarly, Bhamandev, this Asita, this other Asita, he had the righteous Bali being bound up by associates, his associates like Garuda, like Sunanda, and so others. And finally, he thrown him into the nether worlds, into the Patala Lok. He rejected at that moment the quality of a Brahman, such as peacefulness and being straightforward. He acted like a cheater and he enjoyed all the offerings made by the pious King Bali and then threw him from his rulership mm, off to the three worlds into a hole in the earth. Mm. She rather is implying all this in, in, the, in, in her separation. So he was the son of the great sage Kasyapa, it is said he was even a brahmachari. But even though he was all that, she rather implies, he makes my heart tremble of fear when I remember his evil behavior caused. Mm, by, by his adopting a dark complexion. Not any, not one of many times of friendship of, of us with our, which are, we go up is our gold complexion ladies. Not any of, of the association with that black complexion man has proved auspicious at all. I mean, she's absorbed in Krishna basically, but connecting whatever is connected to him. Sanatan so Goswami, in his purpose to this verse also extends Radha's ecstasy, if you will, to a fourth example. Well, Radha is criticizing Krishna for killing Arista, Arista Sur, the bull, because the bull represents Dharma, you know, the, the Radha Kundalila, all this is there in the pre thing. Mm -hmm. So here, Sri Radha is giving an example of a type of, of Jalpa, of mad conversation called Ava Jalpa. Mm -hmm. Ava Jalpa. Mm -hmm. So Ava Jalpa, mm -hmm. it is described by in the Rasa Shastra, like with some statements which show that attachment to him is unadvisable because of his hard nature, because of his lust, and because of his cheating behavior. And so she points these three points in, in these examples. Hard nature, he killed Bali from the back. His lust, he was attached to Sita and thus cut the nose of Sarpanaka. And cheating behavior, Bam and Dev cheating Bali. So Statement which show that attachment to, to the lover, to a person is unadvisable because of hard nature, lust and cheating behavior, is Abhajalpa along with expressions of malice and fear, 
this is called Abhijalpa. So here, the killing of Bali Maharaj is indicating the cruel nature, again, being controlled by woman indicates his lust. Accepting offerings as a Brahmin indicates fraud and friendship with the black fellow indicates fear for her and unsuitableness of attachment. So it's not worthy of attachment. So now there's, that's the first part of Sri Radha's statement in this verse. But at the end you say, you, you realize he said, he said, but I cannot stop speaking about him. <laughs> so in between these lines, it is after Radha say this first part, criticizing Krishna by invoking his different avatars and connecting this with dark complexion. It is like if the bumblebee, which is there like humming, is like re replying to her and say, okay, but if he's so full of faults, they why you are constantly speaking about him without end. I mean, you are criticizing others. So do, do those who criticize others go around criticizing others constantly have pure hearts? Like in playing, you are doing that. So, and, and this to this, Shirada replies in this famous in this famous verse, Industya just tat katartaha, which basically says katartaha. Krishna is the goal of speech in Braj. Krishna is the converging point of all speech in Braj, all Gramya Kata, as Guru Maharaj will say. In Gram in Brindavan, you will find Gramya Kata, village talk, where every Brajabasi may be speaking of Krishna, criticizing him, scolding him from different angles, but Krishna is enjoying that so much. That's the type of Hari Kata there. Raghunath Das Goswami says the same. I prefer to remain in Braj even while speaking nonsense with the village people and going to Dwarka to the topmost exposition of the Bhagavad or wherever. So Sri Radha replies to that. It's impossible for me to stop speaking about him because he's Katarta. He's the goal of speech. He's the very converging point of all Kata. So talking about his activities in past lives is hard to give up, even though it gives us sorrow. All this in the madness of her separation. We, I know we should not be discussing about him, but we cannot give up discussing about him, even whether we criticize him or not. I mean, if we may speak about nice things about him, criticize him, we cannot stop. We are addicted, obsessed in that direction. And although I do not need, she implies any friendship with this blackish person, I'm still unable to give up the treasure of speaking about him. Harikata ki jai. That is the, the, the supreme, this is a very powerful statement that Sri Radha is making here about the glories of Hari Kirtan and Harikata. She's saying basically, I can give up everything. She's speaking to the bumblebee. I can give up even your friend, Krishna, He's speaking to the bumblebee. I can give, a, give up him, but I cannot give up speaking about him. I can only survive that implication. I can only survive this terrible separation from him by continuing to talk about him. So that, that, that's why Sri Radha is who she is, the supreme personality of love for Krishna. Krishna is the supreme personality of God. He is the supreme personality of love for the Godhead. And the supremacy personality of God is for the Godhead, if you will, <laughs> the she goddess. Mm -hmm. There's there are different examples in the scripture that speak about Sri Radha's addiction, even though she determines, I won't speak about Krishna anymore, I won't see Krishna anymore. And sometimes Radha, in another chapter, let's go for, for a moment to another section, but just to expand the idea. But when Sri Mati Radha is angry with Krishna, she's in not, not Prabhas, not the separation caused by time and distance, but man, she's angry with him. The point is similar. So sometimes her first resolution in separation from Krishna will say, I will not look at him anymore. I know which is the consequence of that. And Krishna is nearby trying to get close, but she's, I don't want to see you. But Krishna starts to speak in a very sweet way. And Radha is looking into the opposite direction. And Krishna is standing before she rather as, as if he's begging to her. Just look at me once, just once. And the Sakis, the gopis are there and they start to tell to Radha, oh, oh. how sweetly <laughs> he's standing there in his tree, you know, tree bangalalita, tree bend, tree fold bending form. The life of that lady uh, who does not see such Madhuri, such sisters is totally spoiled. So Shirad is 
not wanting to look, but hearing all those things. <laughs> so what to do? No? She becomes eager to see Krishna and looks at him just only once and goes off again. <laughs> but her fir first resolution is broken. Her first bow is broken. I won't look at him anymore. She broke the bow at some seconds after that. So her second resolution, she still says in man, will say, I won't speak to him at all. But you know how nicely Krishna speaks his Babadook, his speech is very Tarian. So she rather cannot stay silent anymore. Krishna starts to speak and she starts starts to scold him, saying, Go to that girl you love, to that Chandra something. What what are you standing here for? And speaking all these clever words and but she starts to speak to Krishna. She says, I won't speak to him anymore. So her second bow is gone also. <laughs> And her third boy will, will maybe also in those moments, I won't touch him. I won't get, we don't want to get contaminated by the touch of that blackish person. But Krishna is nearby and gradually starts to bring his foot forward. And she, he touched the tips of Sri Radha's toes, toes, the feet toes. So that will make Sri Radha steady. Just that slight contact with Krishna creates a whole turmoil in her. And she angrily will take Krishna by the hand and push him out of the kunja. But again, She's touching him. <laughs> this way, Shimatra Rani will think, will conclude. You, she will speak to her own girlfriends. Just see, I've touched him as well. I broke. I, if I cannot keep any bow, then how can I keep him away? So at that moment, she will hold him by the neck and bring him back into the kunja. <laughs> so in this point, similarly here, going back to the bumblebee leg talk, this, this verse is showing her addiction to Harikata. She can survive without Krishna. She cannot survive without Harikata, Krishna Kata. So that's also applicable for us as sadhakas, because that's she's showing us how we are to survive in our in our in our separation from Krishna, which is of course very different from Sri Radha's separation. So we are in, in, trying to culture purvara, which means the anticipation before the union, because that's the only type of separation we can go through now. But the principle applies. We, we are not relating to Krishna in a direct way, but Harikata is there for us to deal, cope with the situation. Because Harikata is not different from Hari, basically. So in this way, even though the, the point that Vishwanath wants to make, do not forget that, the one is that even though it had come to the Gopi's attention through Purnamasi, through Gargamuni, and this elderly sages personality that Krishna is God, this avatar, that's about this and this other, other avatar. They personally never saw him like this. That's the nature of their Ishvara Bhav. They will tell the gopis what will tell the gopis to Krishna. Krishna Radha will tell to Krishna, come here, sit down and my red lac, my altar on the my foot is no longer there. So you should repaint it. And they will start giving orders to Krishna. Perform this service and that service and so many services. And they will even become angry to, with him and kick him out of the kunja. Mm. So the point is, if they are actually aware of Krishna's God, they have this overtly, Svargyan, how could they have behaved like that? Mm. So whenever they invoke this, this nourishes their Madhurya. Similarly, in the Gopi Gita, they're saying, Nakalu Gopika, mm. Nanda no Bhavam, Akila Dehinam, Antarat Madrik. Vikana Sartito Vishma Guptaye Sakaude Jivam Satratam Kule. They are saying, no? he, is, he, he is not Nakalu Gopikananda no Bhavam. He is not the, the son of Jashoda, actually. He is Akila Dehi Namantarad Madri. He is the inner witness of every single soul. And Vikana Sartito Vishma Guptaye. And Brahma pray for him to come and protect the whole world. But they say, and saying, Saka, and they call Krishna our friend. <laughs> so even though they speak of him of being Paramatma and Bhagavan descending to uplift Dharma, still they think in him of terms of friendship in romantic love, of course. So that's how, interestingly, this Aishwarya comes in the moment of separation. Gopi Gita is also in separation, nourishes the Madhurya. So, we have some more minutes today. I may extend a little bit, a little bit. So be go with me. So we, we, I will share the next section now, which will go a little bit into another direction, but connected to this. It says, 
Before lifting Govardhan, the Brajabasis had no conception of Krishna's Godhood. After he lifted Govardhan and went to Varuna Loka, the conception of Krishna is God arose in them, but still they were filled with pure Madhurya Gyan. So in the same line, now we go off from the gopis and go back to the Govardhan Lila and especially to the Varuna, to the Lila where Nanda Maharaj is brought back from there. So here we have two important examples that some may take the Brajavasis to consider the possibility of Krishna's being God on some level. But even in that case, their Madhurya, let's say here, is not affected, but it's increased. One of them is, as we already mentioned, the Govardhan Lila. The other one is hmm, Varuna. One section comes after the other in the, in the Bhagavad. No? So they are connected between the two. Hmm. When, when Nanda Maharaj is kidnapped in, in the realm of Varuna. So all of the Brajabasis, hmm, as I said, they witnessed many of Krishna's Sajvarya Lila, like kill, killing of demons, etc. They did not think Krishna to be God. When, when they saw Krishna lifting Govardhan Hill, Mm -hmm. and, and very especially mm -hmm. um, when they saw Krishna bringing Nanda Maharaj back from Varuna Loka, for some of them, they started to entertain the possibility he may be God. Mm -hmm. As we saw already in the previous lecture, now after Krishna lifted Govardhan, the Brajabhasa told Nanda Maharaj in the Bhagavatam, if it's not possible for a child who took birth in a family of cowherds, this says the Bhagavad, to perform such astonishing feats, I mean, he's a cowherd. This, this seven-year-old boy has lifted the Govardhan hill, the Bhagavatam says, with just one hand, with the same ease as Arabat, the king of elephants, holds a lotus flower in his trunk. Hmm? Similarly. So what's, what's their psychology there? They're thinking, he must be God. On one, one level, that comes, again, in their own psychology. But if that is so, his God, how, he, how could he be born in a cowherd family and become the object of our criticism in the sense of, again, how the Brajabas is called Krishna and so on. They, they even think, Vishwana comments in the, in the verse, in the commentary to this verse, even the lesser avatars are not born in such low family as ours. What to speak of outstanding avatars? So again, the Brajavas always think we are low born. We are not great people. <laughs> So since an and since an ordinary child cannot hold up a big mountain, that's the point, there is great contradiction in our minds, they think, because of this we see him as a child, but also as the Lord. But that perception is contradictory. So in this way, we have it out. And that's why they ask Nanda Maharaj. But some Brajavas at that point were concluding, oh, Braj, Lord of Braj or Nanda Maharaj, when we see all these amazing activities of your son, we become overcome with doubts because he's your son, but he cannot be an ordinary human child. Certainly he may, he must be the Lord, the Supreme Lord endowed with Chinta Shakti. And, and as we also heard in last class, when Nanda Maharaj heard these words, he quoted the words of Gargamoni. He says some other things when Garga performed Krishna's name ceremony and so on. There's one verse in the Bhagavad and when Nanda Maharaj says, Oh, Gopas, so from then onwards, I consider Sri Krishna to be an Amsam Sriman Narayan who is able to do anything. Hmm. So in this way, the point is Nanda Maharaj said this, trying to produce faith hmm, in all oh, the facts that he was sharing. So he hoped to eliminate their astonishment. Remember, hmm, this Aishwarya can come not only in separation as we see with Sri Radha and the Brahma Gita, also astonishment. Like this case, there is no separation, but there is particular chamatkar, astonishment. So after Nanda Maharaj spoke these words for some cowherds, they had no more doubt in the supernatural nature and activities of Sri Hari Krishna, not like lifting Govardhan. But again, in a more, in a very blissful way, they start to glorify and praise Nanda Maharaj and Krishna in the context of their Madhurya, in the context of their sense of relationship with Hari. So interestingly, Krishna is actually, even if Nanda Maharaj said, from now on, I consider Krishna an of Narayan. Still, that's a form of Madhurya because actually Krishna is superior to Narayan. But here he's said to be similar to Narayan or he's an of Narayan. 
So actually to increase the affection, the, re the real position is hiding naturally, it's hidden. He's the supreme personality of God. He said, okay, he's seen as a, some delegated power over there. And in the same way, apart from Govardhan Lila, we have this section where Nanda Maharaj was kidnapped from, from Varuna in Varuna's boat. And Sukadev Goswami, he mentions to Pariksimara similarly in, in the 10th canto, chapter 28. He says, oh king, seeing the transcendental opulence of Varuna Loka and seeing the inhabitants of Varuna Loka behaving like servants towards Krishna, Goparach Nanda became most astonished and told it to his friends and relatives. Hearing Nanda's words, the cowards consider Krishna to be the Supreme Lord. So we see there are some moments where this awareness comes, but in the particular context of the Braja's psychology. So even then, still, even then, when the Brajabhas' conception of Krishna as their extraordinary good worldly friend, if you will, <laughs> remained unchanged. Because they were totally fixed in their Madhurya psychology, in the intimacy of the dealings of Braj. Jiva Goswami also nicely comments this verse of the Bhagavatam, and he says that, that seeing the respect given to Krishna by Varuna, and his associates, because it's, this is a type of heavenly realm, if you will, lots of Aishwarya in, in their own way. Seeing all that, Nanda was astonished. And the, but this was, Jiva Goswami said, this was before, because of Nanda's absorption in Krishna's sweet human pastimes, and not because he was impressed with Krishna's powers. So the coward, Jiva Goswami said, became excited and thought, oh, a devata like Varuna had such magnificence such whatever Aishvarya. what then can be the magnificence of the cowherd who is the master of the devatas referring to krishna <laughs> but again they they will define him as the cowherd who yeah is the master of the devatas but it's our cowherd our gopa so as a conclusion to this section this verse this were not there's one little section and i'm finishing in five minutes so give me five minutes more please so as a conclusion to this verse, we are finishing here the fifth verse of prose. Bishwana will next again contrast the Madhuri of the Rajavasis with other varieties of more diluted Madhuri found outside of Raj in order to make his point, to create the proper impression on us. So I'll share this for you. And we will share some brief words of explanation and finishing here. So it says like this. <clears throat> going back to some of the previous examples. Sri Vasudev, going back to Mathura, he said to Krishna and Baladev, neither of you are my sons. In contrast, although knowledge of Krishna's divine opulence arose in Nanda Baba's heart after he heard from Varuna Dev and Uddhava, Nanda Baba never had the sentiment that Krishna is not my son nor is it mentioned anywhere that he ever spoke in this way to anyone. Thus, we can see that the Brajavasis are always completely filled with pure Madhurya Gyan. In order, uh, sorry, in contrast, the Madhurya Gyan of the associates of Dwarka was mixed with awareness of the Lord's Aishwarya. So, Vishwanath is finishing here, his fifth verse. Contrasting again, no? on one side we are speaking about Nanda Maharaj, and although Nanda Maharaj heard, mm, and was told by Varuna, by Uddhava, mm, great personalities, that Krishna is God Himself, Nanda Maharaj never uttered statements like those of Vasudev when he told Krishna Balaram, as we see here. Vasudev said, You are not my sons, mm, you are Supreme Lord Himself. Mm. And again, such feelings did not even awaken within Nanda Maharaj's mind. He said, well, he may be God, but first he's my son. And he always, that was the prominent feature of his psychology. Hmm? Nanda Maharaj, just consider Krishna as my son. Hmm? You may be God, as we say, but first of all, you are my son. Hmm? Again, God is an aspect of Krishna <laughs> and not vice versa. That's how the Brajabhasis reached to the high point. Okay, if he's God, okay, that's an aspect of him, something of him, something in him, but it's not him. I mean, he is Krishna. God may be some aspect, some feature like over there, but not vice versa. We are not thinking 
creation is an aspect of God, but exactly the opposite. And so that's a very sweet theological, unique conception. And so in this way, the Brajavas were always filled hmm, with pure Madhurya Gyan. You know, in this case, Madhurya Gyan in the knowledge of Krishna in terms of Madhurya or intimacy. Hmm. While Vishwanath concludes here, contrasting again, the Madhurya Gyan of the residents of Dwarka or Maturas with Sobhasudev that was mixed with some knowledge of Krishna's Aishvarya. We already saw that in Mathura, what to speak, and other places like Dwarka. The far you get from Vrindavan, the more Aishvarya you find. So in this way, Vishwanath, in a very expert way, and he's trying to show us how the Braj of Krishna conception, because here we are speaking about Krishna also in Dwarka, Krishna in Mathura, but not, that's not the same Krishna. There are many Krishnas. There's not the same Krishna, Braja Krishna. So the object of love in Raganuga Bhakti is Krishna and Vrindavan. The example to follow in the wake of is the one presented by the Braja Vasi. So here Vishwanath is trying to very expertly delineate all this, present that, so we have the proper idea, proper orientation to pursue our goal through our Raganuga Bhakti. Ajata Ruchi, most probably Raganuga Bhakti Sadhana. So some words, here it's the end of verse prose number five. So next lecture we will continue with the three remaining verses. And verse number six first will be a quite long one that will take some lectures and so on. So I finish here. I don't know if you have any question, doubts, commentary you may like to share before we finish. I have a question, Maharaj. Mahara? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, it's not real. I guess maybe it's not a question, but it's. I just finished reading the part about Radharani speaking to me, and you know, and I, I know it's my mundane mentality, but I really, I really had a hard time um, reading it because I was thinking, well, he's not really that bad, Radharani. <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't know. I just felt like she was like it was hard for me to read about her criticizing Krishna. Why it was hard? I didn't get that point. Well, because he wasn't really that bad. <laughs> <laughs> but we should understand you know, where that criticism is coming from. It's, it's, a, it's a thing that we have to be very careful not to project. Uh, all the experiences we have had till now has nothing to do with with that particular context. Remember, she's speaking in Divyan Mad. So Divyan Mad means divine madness. Until we don't become mad like her or close to that, we won't be able, to, I mean, if you cannot understand a crazy mad man, mad woman, if you don't become mad like them. If you are mad, the two of you are mad, you will get along together very nicely. <laughs> so, I mean, whatever she's saying isn't from the, erupting, if you will, of different sanctuary vibes, different ecstasies that come in between mm, as part of, uh, this is a very intense peak, ecstatic peak in, in, in the Bhagavad, in Srimati Radharani's in the separation. So, I mean, she's not criticizing Krishna to the point of, I mean, she's Krishna Mai, and that's the name, one name of Sri Radha, Krishna Mai. So she, Krishna is the all in all for her. So, they are, it's just different, different like vantage points through which she remains absorbed in, in her beloved. Try to understand that. In the same way as separation seems to be <clears throat> painful, and you may say, oh, those Brajavas are suffering separation, poor of them, but actually they're experiencing great ecstasy. In the same way, even though Sri Radha seems to be scolding Krishna so hard and speaking names to him, I mean, that's, that's really topmost affection is in, be in between the lines. <laughs> so we have to develop gradually the Adhikar for, for entering that. You know? So it's, it's a gradual process. That's a very high section of the Bhagavad. So it's understandable that it's not so easy to grasp and to enter. It's, again, full access to that, it's when well, we got mad, close, close to that madness. And if, if one is having the the projection of serving under such a guidance, one should gradually enter into that, <laughs> into that influence, no? So, some ideas. That's a pretty esoteric section for sure. 
Well, thank you. I, I just really needed to express that. So thanks for no problem. Listening. Yeah, he's he's not that bad. We we love Krishna as well. <laughs> Doesn't Krishna love hearing yeah. that chastisement more than exactly hearing yeah. the hymns of the Vedas? <laughs> yeah, that, this is the famous lines when when Shirada is scolding me. Actually, that makes forget all the hymns of the Vedas and all the prayers that everyone else is offering me, and I become totally captured. So, actually, in the ultimate underlying reality. She's doing that for Krishna's pleasure because she cannot do anything. She cannot conceive of anything that is not for Krishna's pleasure. That's he, she's the very personification of pleasure potency to Krishna. So whatever comes from her is only for the pleasure of Krishna, even though for us seem, oh, that was a little bit harsh. I don't know if Krishna will like to hear that or whatever. <laughs> whatever is going on is only in the context of giving Krishna's some form of delight. So that's a good point. Thank you, Archana Siddhi, for the addition. But yeah, there are so many things we could say about how Krishna enjoys Sri Radha's man, Radha's scolding, Radha's calling him names. I mean, that's a special. In one section, the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna says, I even enjoy more those moments than the moments of direct union with her. And so we have, we have to, to go beyond the apparent form of that and be careful of not relating that with our experience here and trying to remain start in touch with the underlying principle, which is always giving highest pleasure to Krishna. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Something else? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Yeah. Um, Maharaj, you explained very nicely. Uh, and I have one question. Uh, Maharaj, uh, he said that ba ba Basudev, uh, Basudev uh, is always seeing Krishna as a uh, in Aishwarya Bhav and no, Nanda no. Maharaj always seen Krishna as a uh, Madhurya Bhav. No, I didn't say always in the case of Basudev. But yes, always in the case of Nanda Maharaj. <laughs> Basudev, of course, has a feeling but Salya Bhav for Krishna, the Baki has also. So actually, generally, they do not see Krishna as God. Actually, it's not something that is going on on a daily basis. But in certain moments, similar to Arjuna, Arjuna is a friend of Krishna, and mostly he behaves with Krishna as a friend, a particular friend, of course, not a Gopa and Vrindavan, another type of friendship, like a more a metropolitan friendship, if you will. <laughs> but in certain specific moments, especially when Krishna's Aishwarya comes to the fore, as we say, as we have seen in the Virat Rupa universal form in the Gita, Arjuna's friendship recedes to the background, becomes swallowed by Aishwarya. And similarly, Basudev and Devaki, when Krishna shows Aishwarya is being born from them, saying, I'm God, remember your previous lifetimes and so on, they go back, they're, they're feeling, I'm their father by their mother, and they feel, you are not my son, you are God. But generally, on a normal, if you will, daily basis, that Aishwarya is not there. Their awareness is mainly of Krishna is my son, or Krishna is my friend, but again, not in the same way as Nanda Maharaj just sort of thinks Krishna is my son, not in the same way as Subal thinks Krishna is my friend. There is some nuance to all that as well. So that's not the, 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 the constant Aishvarya experience is that's mainly higher in, in Dwarka than in Mathura, and of course even higher in Vaikuntha, that full, full expression of Aishvarya there in that sense. So that is that that clear? Yes, Maharaj. Thank okay. you. But in the case of Nanda Maharaj, as we have seen, even in the face of Aishwarya, he mm -hmm. remains fixed in his in his Madhurya, in his intimate feeling toward Krishna, in ever increasing way. That's interesting point also. Okay, something else? Maharaj, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we can finish here. Thank you very much, all of you, for your time and patience. Sila Gurudev Ki Jai, Sri Man Mahaprabhu Ki Jai, Sri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai, Sri Raghavar Machandrika Ki Jai, Sri Vishwanatha Kavarti Thakur Ki Jai, Gaur Bhaktavrinda Ki Jai, Gaur Pramananda Haribo, Banchakal Pataruvya Sagriba Sindhu Vyayavata, Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha.
अनंत कोटि विष्णु आप ब्रिंदकी जाए